Cloud is up. Sergeant, will you begin? The opening? Thank you. Good morning and welcome to a remote hearing on public safety. Will council members and staff please turn on their video at this time? Thank you. To minimize disruption, please place your cell phones and electronics to vibrate. Chair, we are ready to begin. Good morning and welcome to today's hearing of the Council's Committee on Public Safety. I'm Council Member Adrian Adams, Chair of this committee. Let me recognize my colleagues who are here with us today. Council Member Gibson, Council Member Cabrera, Council Member Powers, Council Member Holden, Council Member Riley, Council Member Rodriguez, Council Member Brannon, Council Member Rose, Council Member Rosenthal, Council Member Menchaca, and Council Member Deutsch. We expect other council members to join us shortly. Today, the committee will vote on five items. Intro 1671A, my legislation that would completely change how the NYPD records and reports on vehicle stops. Intro number 22A, this bill would effectively end qualified immunity in the city of New York. Resolution 1538A would call on the state to remove the police commissioner's exclusive authority over police discipline. Resolution number 1547 would call on the state to require NYPD officers to actually live in New York City. And finally, a pre-considered resolution by the mayor's office that would adopt the police reform and reinvention collaborative plan required by the state's executive order number 203. So before I speak about my bill, I'd like to talk about the mayor's policing plan. Even though the council is passing seven groundbreaking pieces of legislation today on reforming the police, I imagine the plan, the mayor's plan, will be the one getting a lot of attention. After months, of holding hearings and pressuring the administration to move more quickly and to truly embrace the process outlined in the governor's executive order, the city council had only 12 days to review and revise the plan, a plan the administration knew they had to finish for 10 whole months. So what happens if we don't adopt this plan? Well, I'm gonna tell you, we would face an existential crisis. The governor's office could withhold all state and federal funding from us. We're not talking about a few hundred thousand dollars here. We are talking about billions of dollars, billions of dollars that are desperately needed to help the city rebound from the greatest health crisis of our lifetime. And I am not willing to jeopardize those funds, nor Am I will, willing, given the current climate and the condition of the state, to leave our fate in the state's hands? So let me tell you about the good things in this plan. The council made substantial changes. We secured over $70 million for initiatives to support and expand public safety alternatives to policing and incarceration. We gained 5,000 new FYEPC. We rejected changes that would expand the NYPD's footprint and their bloated budget. We mandated deadlines and public engagement. So yes, I do believe this is a better plan, largely due to the demands of the city council and the many concessions made due to our demands. But I'm not gonna celebrate this plan. This is a change that should have happened a long time ago and then some. And rest assured, this is only the floor and not the ceiling. The city council will build on these changes. This is the beginning of reform, certainly not the end. I do want to extend my deepest thanks to all of our advocates, families, community members that spent countless hours pressuring the administration to do better by the people of New York and for testifying before this committee. I wanna thank our helpers, those that stood with the admin, for the admin, Jennifer Jones Austin, Wes Moore and Arbor Rice. 
for their work. I have to say that many are not satisfied with this plan. I just ask you to continue to work with me, continue to work with the council, to give us the chance to do what we can to set this right. I didn't sign up to be chair of this committee to do three and a half months of work. My agenda is not dictated by state deadlines or the mayor's priorities. We have nine months left in this session and I have no intention of wasting it at all. Now to return to the rest of our agenda this morning, I wanna speak about my bill, intro 1671A. Stop and strip the only tool police have used to harass black and brown communities. And driving while black isn't just an issue in middle America. Ask any New Yorker of color who drives in this city. But we have no idea of how bad this problem is right here in New York City. And that's because the NYPD doesn't track race when it writes tickets. And it doesn't record how many stops it makes. There is no traffic ticket or arrest. There is no record at all. Intro 1671A would fix that by requiring the NYPD to record details on all vehicle encounters and to provide information on the race gender and age of the driver for each stop. I once again wanna thank all of the advocates who have worked on this issue for years, and I'm proud that we're moving forward with it today. I invite any sponsors who have legislation to be voted on through this committee to uh, speak about the, their legislation. Okay, I don't see council members Cumbo, Levin, or Moya for statements. So I will ask the committee clerk at this time to conduct a roll call vote on these important items. Clerk? Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on public safety. All items are coupled. Chair Adams. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Cabrera. I vote aye on 1671A and no on the rest. Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Okay, thank you, Chair Adams, and good morning, colleagues uh, and everyone. Uh, I thank you so much, Chair Adams, for your leadership and, and really making sure that as a committee, we understand the agenda before us. I too join you in being completely frustrated by an executive order by the governor that provided no support, no guidance, uh, no level of help for the city council to come up with, you know, this police reform and reinvention collaboration. We got this document 187 pages about two weeks ago and to digest all of this information is really, really unacceptable. And I hate that we have to vote on this with the understanding that if we don't vote and support this measure, we stand to lose millions of dollars from the state. I don't think it's acceptable. And I agree with you that we have to continue to push I am grateful that through your leadership and the BLAC, we've been able to come up with additional items that relate to summer youth and anti-gun violence organizations, the crisis management system, uh, mental health crisis management teams, um, because I think that speaks volumes to the work on the ground. We have got to look at other stakeholders that are involved in keeping our city and our people safe and not just law enforcement. So I appreciate that even in the last hour, we've been able to get some of those concessions. And I hope that we hold this administration accountable and make sure we get that money. We need more slots for some of you. We need Work, Learn, Grow, Compass, Sonic, Beacon, and all the programs that Chair Debbie Rose has been fighting for as chair. We need to make sure we get that. I too wanna to recognize the hard work and I know the amount of hours and labor invested by Westmore, Ava Rice, and Jennifer Jones Austin. And, and I've seen a lot of the work that they've done in their our respective titles, but I do know that they put a lot of work and effort into this. Um, today's agenda, I am going to support uh, some of the state legislation that these resolutions are supporting, I believe are flawed. 
Um, and so for that reason, I, I will not be able to support. So I will be voting I on intro 1671A. I am going to abstain on intro 2220A. I am going to abstain on resolution 1538A. I am going to abstain on resolution 1547. And I will be voting yes on pre-considered reso 1584 with the understanding that this is the beginning and not the end. And a lot more work must happen from the city council working with this administration. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair, for all of your great work. I appreciate everything you've done. And I know it hasn't been easy for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member Deutsch. Uh, no one no. all. Thank you, one more. Menchaca. I vote aye on all except the preconsidered resolution 1584, and I will bring lo longer remarks on the stated floor. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Miller. Councilmember, I believe we're having the same issue as earlier. My apologies. Councilmember Miller, we can't hear you. We have an audio issue with Councilmember Miller. Can you hear me now, Madam Chair? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, I've switched devices. I'm going to be voting aye on all with the exception of 2220A, of which I'll be abstaining. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your work on this important legislation as well. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you. Council Member Brannon. Yeah, I vote aye on all. Holden. No one all. Powers. Quick permission to explain my vote, please. Permission granted. Thank you, Chair. Um, we're voting on a number of important bills here today. I want to congratulate all the sponsors on their bills getting here to the finish line. And we'll also be voting, of course, on the mayor's plan around policing. And I want to say, you know, while I think the plan itself is not a bad plan, I think that it's, and it certainly includes a lot of things that I think we'd all like to see happen here in the city. I think folks are right to note that it still lacks a lot of real detail here. And will certainly include a lot of political will far beyond when the mayor is here, including the next mayor and the city council to actually deliver on those results. And I, like others, I'm concerned about that. And um, I wish it said, say, as the chair said, I wish this come before the council much sooner. With that being said, I do think it sets up a framework here for us to work from. And I know that the chair, Chair Adams, and all of us are going to have to continue to do our jobs here to make sure that uh, we, we hold the framework up and we continue to do the work. So uh, I look forward to doing that work alongside of you. And Chair Adams, I know you will uh, hold this uh, administration accountable 
uh, as you always do. So ultimately, I, I am voting yes. And I know that we all have to continue the work here. But I thank everyone and congratulate them on their bills. Thanks. Thank you. Council Member Riley. Good morning, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I want to commend my colleagues in government for their hard work that went into this police reform pack um, package, but respectfully, I must admit, I believe we have so much further to go. My experience as a black man and the ongoing experiences of black and brown communities cannot and will not be addressed in this one package or a single bill. The resolution to police reform is complex and will require a collaborative approach when discussing and implementing solutions. We must further our efforts to ensure police accountability and transparency. I wanna emphasize that this plan is only the first step in many more steps to follow. And I look forward to continuing this important work with my colleagues in government to implement sound, meaningful and impactful legislation that will change the social norms of black and brown communities. And with that being said, I would like to vote aye on all. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you, one moment. Okay, thank you for your patience. Okay. Uh, items on today's public safety agenda all have been adopted by different votes. I believe we have, uh, is Council Member Barron a part of the committee? Uh, no, we, we have full committee. Oh, thank just you. sitting in, thank you. Thank you. Vote are as followed. Introduction 1671A was adopted by the committee nine in the affirmative, two in the negative, no abstentions. Introduction 2220-A, adopted by the committee with six in the affirmative, three in the negative, two abstentions. Resolution 1538-A, adopted by the committee seven in the affirmative, three in the negative, one abstention. Uh, res resolution 1547, adopted by the committee seven in the affirmative, three in the negative, one abstention. And pre-considered resolution adopted by the committee with seven in the affirmative, four on the negative and no abstentions. Thank you. Thank you, Clark. This hearing is hereby adjourned. <laughs>